Good morning and welcome to Salem Church. We're so glad that you're joining us in worship. This is the service for March the 14th, which is the fourth Sunday in Lent. We're now a little over halfway in our 40 day journey as we remember Jesus' journey to the cross. Today is traditionally a day, this particular Sunday, when we take just a small break from the solemn mood of Lent. We're preparing ourselves for that final stretch of Holy Week and anticipating the joy that awaits us in Easter. So today is called Latare Sunday, which is the Latin word uh, for rejoice. And it comes from the ancient prayers used in the beginning of the services in churches on this Sunday, words recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, rejoice, O Jerusalem. So if you can see in the picture, we have a little bit of pink on our altar in the candles, and I'm wearing a pink shirt. And this pink is the symbol, or it's almost a rose color that we use, just like the one Sunday during Advent, to highlight the hope and joy of our life in Christ. And perhaps it matches the mood of many of us as we are seeing some hope in our journey through this global pandemic as things begin to open up a little bit and we have hope of being able to do some things uh, in new ways that we haven't done in a while. But I remind us that our hope is anchored in God and we come to worship together. In faith, we offer ourselves in the hope and joy of God's work within us and among us as a community of people seeking to follow Jesus. Our purpose is to love like Jesus. So I invite Susan now to call us to our time of worship. Not sure. Is my mic on? Okay. <laughs> Come and worship. Open your hearts to the joyful power of God's love. We seek to follow the example of Jesus Christ, that he may teach us his ways of love and humble service. Let us join together in our opening prayer this morning. Everlasting God, because of your tender mercy toward all people, you sent your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all should follow the example of his great humility and love. In your mercy, guide us to follow the example of his patient sacrifice and by your grace, make us to share in his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. We're going to start this morning um, uh, by singing the classic hymn, We Have a Story to Tell to the Nations. <laughs> Shall come. 
Thank you. Perhaps that pause was a prayerful thing. Thank you, Allison, for leading us in our opening music and for this prayer of our hearts that we would be more like Jesus, more holy, more loving as the Spirit of God fills us, moves within us, transforms us and makes us more like Jesus. You can see in the picture, I hope, the beautiful banner filled with your hearts. We wanna thank everyone who participated. It was exciting to watch them come in and to see um, some folks put their names on them so we saw where they, they were from. And we have some more hearts to add. And thank you to Sue York for putting together the banner for us. and. Um, a special thank you to our Noah's Ark students for preparing hearts and there are more to come. So if there is, um, if you can not see your heart in the picture, it will be put up this week. So thank you for offering your hearts to God. A quick reminder that we have Vespers Wednesday evening at 6.30 outside invite you to join us and to those members of our finance committee and church council our meetings were originally scheduled for this tuesday and they are being postponed till april the 20th we received a uh, late word that our bishop is doing a state of the church address tuesday evening and i'll be tuned in to listen 
the word from our bishop. And if anyone is interested, if you go to the conference website, you can get information. Um, that would be bwcumc.org. So we look forward to hearing from Bishop Easterling and um, her sharing the state of the church at this time. We want to begin by offering our prayers of sympathy and support to Bob and Carol and all their family on the death of Carol's father yesterday, Calvin Dietz. We also want to extend our sympathy to friends of the Brown family. Um, Liz first mentioned this in Sunday school, and then I also heard from Michelle, um, the father of one of Liz's friends died this week, and we want to keep them in our prayers. Also very tragic news that was shared with us from Sharon M. She had asked for prayers for a friend's daughter, Nicole, who had been missing for a few days, and tragically, they found her body on Friday. And so prayers for her family as they mourn this terrible tragedy. We uh, received requests, prayers from Sue D for her sister's son, Andrew. He's having more health problems and also prayers for the Hopkins family. Good news from Susan W about her uncle. Surgery went well and he's back home. We offer our prayers to Bill Packer, uh, who was in the hospital for back pain. And while he was there, they determined that he desperately needed a heart procedure and that has gone well. And he was scheduled to come home from the hospital. So we keep all of these people in our prayers. And I also add that um, we ask for continued prayers for Jerry and Karen both. And Jerry just found out from his test that he's going to have to have surgery and he's awaiting word when. So we continue to keep on our prayers, um, members of our church family and the various requests we share with one another, as well as God's people throughout the world. I would invite us to join our hearts and minds together in a time of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the beauty of this day and for your presence with us always. We thank you for the opportunity to worship together, to lift our prayers to you and to share them with each other. Oh God, we pray for all of the people and places and situations that we have named Especially we ask your blessings on those who are ill, for all who are caring for loved ones, for those who mourn the loss of those dear to us. Pray for all who are grieving. We give you thanks for your healing power and ask that you would bless those who are in need. We pray, O oh God, for each one joining us in worship, for the things that are heavy upon our hearts, O oh God. We lay our burdens at your feet. We trust in your unfailing mercy and love. We pray for those who are unable to be with us in worship. And we ask, oh God, that you would bless the ministry of our congregation, that we might strive to bring you honor and glory, that we would serve with joy and humility. We pray for our community, we give you thanks for all those who are helping, especially those making sacrifices for the good of all. We pray for our nation. We pray for our world, a world that you love. 
a world you love so much that you gave us your son, Jesus, to be the savior of all who would believe. And now, God, bind us together through the power of your Holy Spirit as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll say good morning once again and a special hello to our children and young people who are joining us today. We miss seeing your faces and hearing your laughter and feeling your energy with us in person. But we are so glad that you are a part of our church family. We welcome all our friends in Jesus. Again, thank you to everyone who made hearts and offered them to God for use in our banner. I hope you can see how beautiful it is. Each heart is unique, and you can feel the love coming from all these hearts. For a number of weeks now, we've been talking about the way that Jesus loves us. And Jesus wants us to love one another in the same way that he loves us. Today's Bible story tells us about something very special that Jesus does for his closest friends to show his love. In those days, we remember that people walked everywhere and the roads were not the way they are today. The roads were dusty and dirty. So if they were invited to go to a friend's house, they most likely would arrive with very dirty feet. And they might be a little tired and their feet might be hurting them. And it was important that whoever was hosting that um, gathering, the person's house where they were, that person was responsible for having their servant wash everyone's feet. It was always done by the servants, not by the host. In this story that we will hear from the Bible, Jesus is the one who washes the feet of his friends. His friends are so shocked when he does this because it was not what was done ever. They'd never seen this before. Here was Jesus, their master, their Lord, their teacher, washing their feet just like a servant would do was so hard for them to understand why Jesus would do such a thing. But what Jesus tells them next is even more shocking and surprising to them. Jesus tells them that because he has washed their feet, they must do it for one another. Jesus gives them an example of how to love others. We must serve each other and take care of one another. And sometimes it means doing things we don't want to do or that we feel that we should have to do. Now, for us, it may not be washing someone else's feet. It could be a chore that you don't particularly like, maybe taking out the trash or being nice to someone you don't like. So I want us all, our young people and our young at heart, to be thinking what we can do to be like Jesus. How can we show our love for God? How can we care for someone else this week? This is a challenge 
for all of us. And here is our reward. Jesus says that if we do this, if we serve, then we will be happy. I ask that you would bow with me in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us so much. Give us that kind of love for one another. Help us to care for each other and to give of ourselves, even when we don't want to, even when we don't feel like it. Show us how to love like Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. There's another story from the Bible that talks about a woman who met Jesus and she wanted to show her love for him. And so she brought a precious vial of perfume and she washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair and then poured out this beautiful um, perfume to, um, to rub on his feet as a sign of love. So I'd like to sing a song about that and about the great love of Jesus for us. One day a plain village woman Disregarding the score, and once it was broken and spilled out, fragrance filled all the room like a prisoner released from his shackles, like a spirit set free from the tomb. Broken and spilled out Just for love of you, Jesus My own precious treasure Lavished on me Broken and spilled Broken and spilled
Allison, that was beautiful. Our scripture reading this morning is from John 13, verses 1 through 20. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you'd understand what I am doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must watch each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. I am not speaking about all of you. I know those whom I've chosen. But this is to fulfill the scripture. The one who eats my bread has turned against me. I'm telling you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am. I assure you that whoever receives someone I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you, Susan. And Mark, if you would put the scripture verse um, slide, sorry, that picture back up for a moment, please. Thank you. I want us to really focus on this image of Jesus pouring water in the basin and then washing the feet of his disciples. Jesus says, I have given you an example, just as I have done, you must also do. This is Jesus speaking at the Last Supper, gathered with his closest followers and friends, his disciples. These are challenging words for those gathered with him that night. And these are challenging words for all of us who seek to follow Jesus. And I would invite us to meditate prayerfully on the meaning of these words for us as we strive to love like Jesus. We believe that Jesus is our savior, our teacher, our redeemer, our master, our friend. What has he done for his disciples in washing their feet? And what has he done for us in washing the feet of his followers? What has he done for all the world in loving us in this way? And what example does he give to us that we might be instruments of sharing his love. I spoke last week about Jesus at this very same table, at this last meal with his disciples. And we remember that Judas was there. Jesus invited him to share the meal at the table with him. And in today's scene from the Bible, Judas is there. Judas is among the disciples whose feet are washed by Jesus. Jesus has invited his closest followers, the ones we call disciples, to eat with him. One last meal. Jesus knows that it would be the very last time they would eat together before his arrest and his death. But Jesus' disciples do not know. The gospel record emphasizes that Jesus loved his disciples and followers, and he shows that love fully, completely, and to the end. His love does not waver. And more than anything else, on this night, Jesus wants his disciples to know how very much he loves them. And that nothing, nothing can take his love away from them. As they are eating together, Jesus gets up from the table. And he takes off his robes and he puts a towel around his waist. You can imagine the shock of his disciples. He proceeds to kneel and to wash the disciples' feet. All the disciples, Peter protests, you know, Peter's always bold to say what he's thinking, but Jesus insists and washes his feet. And Jesus washes the feet of even Judas, his betrayer. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Jesus, the master, the Lord, the teacher, the savior. He stoops literally and figuratively to fulfill the task of a servant. And not just 
a servant, but the lowest of servants. This particular task was reserved for the lowest of the servants. The writer Max Lucado describes the scene in this way. Hands that shaped the stars now wash away filth. Fingers that formed mountains now massage toes. And the one before whom all nations will one day kneel now kneels before his disciples. Hours before his own death, Jesus' concern is singular. He wants his disciples to know how much he loves them. Yes, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. And if that isn't shocking enough, Jesus goes even further. When he is finished, he looks at his disciples and tells them that they too must wash each other's feet. They must serve. They must learn the way of servanthood and sacrifice. And in saying this, Jesus makes this truth clear. We have lost all rights to be anything but humble. Jesus is our example. And so humility is required of us in the way of Jesus' love. Humble service is true greatness in Jesus' value system. But wait, there is a blessing. And isn't there always when we serve? Jesus says that we will be happy if we follow his example and serve. There will be a natural joy that comes from humble service. Mark, you can uh, just highlight me, not the next one. You can just, thank you. Um, I want you to think for a moment with me about how you feel when you serve someone else. Think about times when you've put someone else's needs ahead of your own, maybe made sacrifices or done something that you might have considered a um, a lowly task. But how do you feel when you serve like Jesus? Now, this might seem like a strange example, and I don't mean any disrespect, but when I think about joyful service, I can't help but think about experiences I've had going to Chick-fil-A. You can laugh if you want. It's kind of a funny uh, image, but I don't know what your experience has been, but it seems like every time when I go to Chick-fil-A, when I'm finished my uh, order and the server is finished, the last thing a person says is, it was my pleasure to serve you. And there's such a genuine tone to that statement that I really believe that there is a joy in the service that I have received. Do we truly want to serve? And do we have that genuine joy that comes from serving others in the name and spirit of Jesus? As persons seeking to follow the example of Jesus, we must place humble service as a priority in showing our love. This is true for us as individual followers of Jesus. I've made reference several times to the book um, by Bishop Michael Curry, and he has this wonderful way to kind of um, evaluate how we're doing in loving like Jesus. And he writes, all I can do is check myself again and again. Do my actions look like love? And I would add this, do my actions look like the love of Jesus? Would Jesus love like this? 
did Jesus love like this? When we're trying to figure out how to love like Jesus, we follow the example that he has given us. And then we have to kind of reflect back on what we've done. Does this show the love of Jesus? And I believe that we need to apply these same questions to our church's ministry. Does our life together look like the love of Jesus in action? Are we here to serve? And do we have an attitude of being happy to serve? In this Bible lesson, Jesus does something very specific. He washes the feet of his disciples. Now, you will find, particularly as we approach Maundy Thursday, that some churches reenact this scene. They have foot washing as a part of their Holy Week observances. And in some traditions, foot washing is almost sacramental, like communion and baptism. So what is it that is so significant about the act of washing someone else's feet? We know in Jesus' days on earth, it was a sign of hospitality. People needed to have their feet washed after walking to another person's home. But if you look at how Jesus talks with them about the washing of their feet, there's almost um, a hint that this is about spiritual cleansing as well. You see, Jesus knew whose feet he was washing and what they were going to do. He knew that in a matter of a few short hours, every one of his disciples would abandon him. Judas would betray him. Peter would deny him. They all would fall away. And so Jesus is, is somehow forgiving them or offering them that opportunity to have new life and to repent and to almost prepare them for this time after Jesus' death. And so we can see this foot washing with Jesus and his disciples in the light of baptism and the cleansing from sin and a commitment or recommitment to following Jesus. I want to share with you um, a very personal story. I hope I can do it justice. When I think about washing feet, and I've been meditating around the scripture quite a bit lately, I think back to an experience I had just a few weeks ago with my father. As his cancer progressed and he got more and more ill and lost his strength, he of course was unable to leave the house for anything. And of course, this meant that we brought in hospice services, nursing services, and aid to help him bathe. Um, a friend of ours came and cut his hair, but he needed to see his podiatrist, and he had an appointment uh, on his calendar. And I called the office, and I explained the situation, and I said, I'll have to cancel that appointment because there's no way I can get him uh, to your office at this point. And the woman said to me, well, we have a doctor who will do this for you in your home. And I was kind of surprised because I wasn't familiar with this type of service. One of the podiatrists made it his life's work at this point to work exclusively going to people's homes and caring for those who were unable to come to the office. And so I called and made the arrangements with him and he seemed very pleasant and I um, I had great confidence in him coming to the home. And when he came, I was not disappointed. He was so kind and caring. And he carried himself with humility and compassion. I can't remember. He shared a little bit about his story, but he'd been practicing medicine for over 50 years. So he was a senior himself. And he talked with us about his own experience of battling cancer and that at this point he was a survivor. But he had brought a very low stool with him and he took it out and he placed it at my father's feet and he sat on it 
And I watched him as he so gently and cared for my father's feet. And I watched him and I couldn't help but think about the love of God expressed in humble service. I couldn't thank him adequately for what he had done. And he was happy to do it. It brought joy to him to care for others in this way. A servant's heart. So how can we offer our humble service and do it with joy? How do we love like Jesus, who silently and joyfully washes the feet of his closest friends and followers? How do we begin? I believe that we begin with the posture Jesus takes on our knees. Now, this does not have to be a physical kneeling, because not everyone can do that. But spiritual surrender is necessary. We begin in humility with prayer and love. And we look to follow the example of Jesus. My friends, no task is too insignificant. No task is beneath us. But it means tuning your heart and mind to the needs of another person. And it means suspending any judgment we might have on the other. And now, Mark, if you'll show us this image um, that I wanted to share with you, it just seems like it carries a message for us today. It's hard to throw stones when you're busy washing feet. Love like Jesus. This also ties back into last week's message on Jesus' command and example of loving our enemies. When we focus on serving others, we will grow in our capacity to share the love of God with them. Humble service allows God to work through our actions to express genuine love, the love of Jesus Christ, our humble savior, our example, our teacher, our friend. Love like Jesus. In response to Jesus' love for us, let us join together in praying our prayer of commitment. Lord Jesus Christ, Teach us your way of love. We are humbled by your example of sacrifice and service. We are grateful for your presence at work in our lives. In response to your love and grace, we offer ourselves and our church's ministry to you. Redeem and restore us. Make us your people that we may share your love by serving our neighbor. We commit ourselves to love one another as you have loved us and love us still today. In your holy name, we offer this prayer of commitment and our gifts for your glory. Amen. Would you join me in singing the doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Join me in singing this closing song of worship, Make Me a Servant. Make me a servant, humble and meek, Lord, let me lift up those Chorus again. 
again. And now may the abundant love of God surround you. May the extravagant grace of Jesus Christ sustain you. And may the constant presence of the Holy Spirit inspire and encourage you in every good and loving deed and word. Amen. invite you to unmute and uh, turn your, your camera on so that we can all see you and enjoy in a time of fellowship this morning. <laughs> 